Hey, how's it going guys? This video is going to be about fixing a blown um, audio power amplifier, the kind that you would put in a rack to drive a set of PA speakers. These things generally blow when uh, you're driving them too hard, when you're driving them to clipping for a sustained amount of time. Some component inside will create a short circuit, usually a output transistor, and um, causes it not to work anymore, but if you know what you're doing, these things aren't too bad to fix and you could save yourself some money, so we're going to take a look at that. Now the first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that the amp is actually blown, and it sounds stupid, but there's, there's two fuses, or two sets of fuses, if you want to say that there's a circuit breaker right here on the front panel. First thing is just make sure that that hasn't tripped because um, underpowered wall sockets and, and things like that can cause that circuit breaker to trip and that's not a blown amp. Um, that was just a bad power source. So reset the circuit breaker, plug it into a new outlet and if it keeps tripping then you might have a problem but uh, that could be the issue right there. The other option is that the internal fuse, uh, which looks like this, has actually blown. Uh, there's usually one for each channel. Um, if this thing is blown, then that means that there is a problem with some circuitry inside the amp. Something is short-circuited. So if this fuse is blown, you know that you have a real issue. So I've just taken the cover off the uh, amp here, and uh, just to show you where the fuse holders are, but they'll be right on the circuit board somewhere. There's two of them on this amp because it's a it's a two-channel amp. It's a stereo amp. Uh, what you want to do is just grab a set of pliers and carefully um, just pull that fuse out of there. If I zoom out here, you'll see um, these huge capacitors over here. These things can kill you if if they shock you. So just be aware of that. Don't stick two hands in there at once. Maybe use gloves, but um, if you're not an idiot, you should be fine. Just make sure you don't, um, you know, start playing with those things. So after you pull the fuse, um, if one of your channels still works, pull the channel that doesn't work. It should be labeled on the uh, circuit board, uh, channel A and B, or one and two. But pull the fuse for the channel that doesn't work, and you're going to want to get your multimeter just to check that this fuse is actually blown. We're going to set this to resistance here. Uh, this little icon means ohms, and any of these will work for what we're doing. I'm just going to set it to 2000. You're going to take your fuse, touch one side to the uh, black probe, other side to the red, and if you look on the uh, screen there, it's staying at one, so that means that no current is able to flow through this fuse. If I touch two probes together, you'll see it jumps right down to uh, 0.01 so basically zero current is free to flow between these two probes if this fuse here was still good the same thing would happen the current would be able to get through and that would go right down to zero instead of one so if you do determine that it is this fuse that blew do not go out and get a new fuse and put it inside the amp and try to turn it back on because this blue something is 100 percent shorted out inside the amp and by replacing this fuse you're only going to do more damage to it and make your life harder and more expensive so don't do it so our fuse is blown which means that there's a short circuit somewhere inside of our amp and we gotta find that and 99 percent of the time it's going to be an output transistor and I'll explain what that is in a second but basically that is what's cranking out all the power to your speakers. That's what's doing all the work. And when one of those goes, you could be sure that this fuse is going to go as well. What I've got here is just uh, the circuit diagram for a transistor, just to explain what's going on here. Basically, you've got three pins on a transistor. You've got a collector, a base, and an emitter. So the base here receives a, uh, a small input signal that you want to amplify. So, you know, maybe it's coming out of the headphone jack on your phone. Or, or whatever, but it's it's receiving a very small signal. So on the collector you've got the maximum voltage that your signal can be. Um, on these amps I believe it's 76 volts, but it's it's a large DC signal that just sits there until it receives an input signal on the base. Whatever the base signal is, say you've got a waveform here, 
coming through. When this spikes up, this lets current through. And it's proportional, so the more of an input signal, the more of this collector signal is going to be let through to the emitter. So now when your amplifier actually shorts out and trips the fuse, usually what happens is the collector shorts straight through to the emitter. And if you understood what I just said, that means that this base signal is no longer controlling how much voltage gets through. It's just straight through, maximum power all the time. And that is what is going to uh, trip this little fuse here. Now if this is what happened, and it usually is, um, you're in luck. This is going to be pretty easily fixable. Now what can happen is the collector shorts to the base, which is worse, um, because now basically what you're doing is allowing the full maximum voltage from the collector uh, into the base, which is going to flow backwards into all the other circuitry, which is not designed to handle you know, 76 or whatever voltage your amplifier is. Alright, so what I've got here is the actual circuit diagram for my amp, the, uh, the QSC 900, USA 900. And if you look here, uh, this is the diagram that I just showed you of a transistor. Um, four times though. It's actually four on this side and four on this side. And this is per channel for my amp. One transistor isn't enough, or, or two, one for each side is not enough. On this particular amp, there's eight per channel because one or two transistors can't handle the the current that's required. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit here and show you what happens when these things short out. We've got our base straight down the middle and this is our input signal. Um, it's the same for each of the transistors which is why they are all in parallel. In fact all of the pins of these transistors are in parallel. They're working as basically one big transistor. We've got our collector up here at the top, which is hooked up over here to our uh, power supply. And at the bottom we've got our emitter, which go through resistors to this line here. Um, don't worry about that for the moment. So like I said, when these things blow, um, one of these transistors will short out from the collector, generally, to the emitter. So this will be a straight path through, which will throw the fuse. Now the, the trouble is finding which of these transistors has actually gone bad, which can be tricky if you don't know, you know, exactly how the thing is wired. Um, you could, of course, replace all of them, but on this amp, these are five bucks a pop. You do the math, five times eight is forty bucks. So I'm going to show you now exactly how to test which transistor is bad and any other components that may be bad as well. So we've got the amp here. These things at the bottom, these round things, those are the output transistors. Uh, you can see clearly I've taken two out already um, because in my case those are the ones that were bad but I'm going to show you exactly how I came to that conclusion in one sec. This top row is the A channel and this might vary um, but on my amp these top ones are the A channel, the bottom ones are the B channel and obviously my A channel was bad which is why uh, I took two transistors out. So if we probably do this without cutting, but if I flip this amp around here, let me just take the uh, back panel off, hang on. So here we go, we've got the panel off, and you can see all these pins here, right along the bottom. Those are all of the pins poking through from the transistor. Now the metal plate that they were attached to, that is actually the base, and that is how they're all connected together. But what we care about is finding shorts between the emitter and the collector, which are these two, you know, these sets of pins. One's the emitter, one's the collector on all of these. So we're going to take our multimeter, we're going to go back to resistance, and I'm going to go to the lowest possible resistance setting, which on this meter is 200 ohms. Um, you should do the same on your meter, it's going to be a lot more clear. The resistances that we're dealing with here aren't very big at all, you know, 20, 30 ohms, something like that. So the lower, the better. And what we're going to do is we're going to go along here. Let me see if I could get the meter up so you could see it. But what we're going to do is go to the first two pins. See, we get 23. 
the next two, 23 again, 23, and 23 for the last one. Now if you remember these were kind of grouped into fours, this is you know one side for the B channel, the other side for the B channel, A channel, other side of the A channel. So what I just did is measure one side of the B channel and if you saw we got 23 ohms across the board. All of them were 23. That's a good that's a good sign. If they're all not close to zero, you're in good shape. That channel is working. And especially if they're all exactly the same, or very, very, very close to the same, that's a good thing. Now on a channel that is bad, like my A channel was, um, it's kind of unfortunate that I can't show you because I've already pulled the transistors. But basically you're gonna go along and you're gonna try one. It's gonna say mine was like 1.2 so that's really close to zero I knew that that channel was busted just by that you go to the next one 1.2 again and you go to the next one 0 0.7 it was then you go to the last one 1.2 again so looking at those results I got 1.2 1.2 0 0.7 and 1.2 this one sticks out now you might think oh that's you know it's what half an ohm but this is the key to figuring out which transistor is bad. This half an ohm difference here actually does indicate the bad transistor, and I'm going to show you why that is in a second. But if all you care about is fixing this thing, that's the one that you need to pull out. So unsolder this transistor, and all of these numbers that were 1.2 should jump back up to 23, or whatever your, you know, your baseline uh, measurement was for your good channel or your good transistors. So now that's one side of the broken channel taken care of. There's another scenario that you can run into, and this is what happened to me as well. On the you know the other side of the A channel, I got 23, so it looks good. I was like, oh cool, this this side is fine. But as I kept going, whoops, 23. I got one channel that was lower than the rest by by a, obviously a large amount. It was the same resistance as the bad one from the other side but the other three were were still normal and what this means is that both the transistor and the resistor if we go back to the diagram uh, this resistor right here means that that resistor is bad as well and again I will go back to the circuit diagram and just show you but if all you care about is fixing the thing you're gonna wanna pull the transistor and also pull that resistor that it's attached to. So just, just to show you, these are the resistors that I'm talking about on the actual amp. These white uh, boxes, those are the resistors. Transistors, right above them, resistors. Uh, regardless of what amp you have though, they should generally look like this. The output transistors that you're checking will be on this huge metal heat sink because they get real hot. And then right above them there'll be big, beefy resistors. Um, you can almost be 100% sure that that's what they are, but if not, try to find a circuit diagram and trace the wires or whatever. But, you know, generally that should work. Alright guys, so like I said, if you only just want to fix this thing, you're pissed off already that I was talking for the whole video and not just showing you what to do, you're going to want to just close it right here. You already know what's bad. Go online. Uh, the transistors will have a number on the back of them, a brand most likely, and a number. Just search that exact number into Google. But um, if you want to know why we were able to tell um, from that small difference in resistance which transistor was bad, I'm just going to get into that here just because it's good to know. Um, it kind of helps me, help me at least, understand uh, what was kind of going on with this amp. So we've got our transistors here. Uh, normally, you know, from the collector to the emitter, nothing, no, no current would be able to flow unless we obviously have a, uh, a base input signal, which we don't when the amp's off. So if we measure from collector, uh, you know, assuming this is a good channel, from collector to emitter on all of these, uh, like I just showed you before, we got 23 ohms all the way across. And that's because there's no short circuit through here. It's not going to read zero. It, it has to go through other circuitry um, in order to get back to here. It's got to go, you know, around somewhere not important where it goes. So now let's say that one of these transistors is broken. Let's say this third one. 
So we got a good transistor, good transistor, good transistor. And this third one is broken. It's shorted out between the uh, collector and the emitter. If we measure across here from, you know, we're, we're going to put our two probes of our multimeter, one on the collector, one on the emitter, we're going to be measuring this resistance through here. And on the broken one, if I recall, it was 0 0.7 ohms. So there is some small resistance, not much at all, under an ohm, to get through the transistor. Now, electricity is always going to find the path of least resistance. So if we measure an unbroken one, we're going to put our probes here and here, just like the last one. Instead of that electricity flowing around through all the other circuitry, giving it that 23 ohms uh, reading that we got, instead it can go from the collector here, right up here, through the broken transistor, so that's 0.7, through this 0.22 and this 0.22, back to our other probe. And these add up to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 of an ohm. Just like we, we saw, it's going to add that much extra than the broken one. Same with any of these. Because they're all con uh, connected in parallel, any of these can just find this shortest path down and back up through this these two resistors and that is why all of them read low but one of them reads in this case about 0.5 ohms lower now it was 0.5 ohms in this case but all of these power amps are going to have a very very small resistance value under an ohm um, connected to these transistors all of these are doing these resistors are doing, I should say, is basically distributing the work evenly between these res these uh, transistors. And that's outside of the scope of this video, to be perfectly honest. I don't exactly fully understand it, but it's to prevent one transistor from doing too much work and burning up. But I'm not even going to attempt to explain that myself, because I'll probably make a fool out of myself if I haven't already. If you are still with me here, I really, really do appreciate it. I know that this is probably a long and boring video, but uh, I just wanted to explain it in pretty pretty good depth, as best I can uh, understand it at least, because trying to fix this thing myself, you know, it took hours of just searching crap on the internet and weeding through all this nonsense to, you know, try to find someone who actually had a solid... Um, idea of how to fix one of these things. Uh, so again, I thank you. Um, if you have any questions, I can't promise I can answer them because, frankly, I, um, I'm not the best with this stuff. I'm not the best with electronics. But if you would like to leave a comment asking something, I will certainly do my best to answer it for you or at least point you in the right direction. Um, give me a thumbs up if you thought it was good, if, if it helped you at all. Uh, or just leave me a comment, send me a message if, if this helped you out. I'd love to uh, hear that somebody at least was able to use this and didn't have to go out and buy a new amp. So uh, thanks again. See you later.